Welcome to the fourth section of the course. In this section we'll be using linear and relative layouts and apply gravity and weight. Then we'll be scaling weights with weight sum. Further, we'll learn about screen rotation. Then develop layouts for specific screen sizes and finally create a strategy pattern. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with linear layouts. In this video we'll be learning to use linear layouts. Here we'll be applying gravity and weight to set the position and proportion of the screen. Choosing between a relative layout and a linear one is normally very simple. If your components line up from side to side on top of each other, then a linear layout is the obvious choice. Whichever form best suits our needs. Once we begin testing our layouts on screens of different shapes or even rotate a screen through 90 degrees. Very often these issues can be remedied by positioning elements using gravity properties and scaling them with the weight property. Being able to set position and proportion without having to worry overly about the exact screen shape can save us a lot of work. By setting the weight property of components and widgets we can determine the relative amount of screen width or height an individual component takes up. This is particularly useful when we want most of our widgets set with wrap underscore content so they grow as the user needs, but also want one view to take up as much space as available. The image view is the only view to have weight applied. The other views will have all their height declared with wrap underscore content. As shown here we have to set the layout underscore height to 0 dB to avoid any internal conflicts when setting the view's height. Automatically filling screen space that is liable to change is very useful, but weight can be applied to more than one view to create layouts where views each consume a specified relative area of an activity. For example, these images were scaled with weights 1, 2, 3 and 2. Although nesting layouts within each other is generally avoided, it's often worth considering one or two levels as this can produce some very workable activities. For example, look at this layout. This layout uses only two nested view groups and the use of weight can keep the structure very workable across quite a wide range of form factors. Of course, this layout would look terribly in portrait, but we see how this issue is countered later. This is our XML code to generate such a layout. The example throws some interesting questions. What if we don't want to fill the entire width or height of our layout? What if we want some space left? This is easily managed with the weight sum property. To see how weight sum works, add this code inside the inner linear layout definition. By setting a maximum weight for the layout, the inner weights will be set as proportion to this. In our example, a weight sum of 10 sets the inner weights, which are 3 and 2, to 3 by 10 and 2 by 10 of the layout height, like so. The use of weight is an extremely useful way to make the most of unknown screen sizes and shapes. Another technique for managing overall screen space is to use gravity to position components and their contents. The gravity property is used to justify views or their contents. In our example, the markup was used to position the action at the bottom of the activity. From this example, we learned how layout underscore gravity is used to justify a view or view group within its container. The contents of a single view can also be positioned within that view with the gravity property, which can be set like this. After adding the code, we'll run our main file. We'll run our app. Wow, we got our output. We can also give our feedback. That's nice. This is how the image will shrink as the text increases. In this video, we applied weight and gravity and learned about linear layouts. That's great.